Hey everyone, we're trying out a new deck today, playing with uh, Viego. So this is going to be our Frozen Despair deck, and I could have built this like a it Who Endures deck, but I really wanted to test out the strength of Rhymefang Denmother, and I just did not have room for all the top end finishers the deck could play. There becomes a lot more options when you're playing this combination of regions. So uh, what we're running is we're running uh, a few Omen Hawks for some early game presence, and um, you're never mad to have extra buffs, especially in an aggro matchup. Uh, three Ice Veil Archers because they give us a Frostbite for all of our stuff that cares about that, as well as um, have an okay attack line for something like Viego stats. We're playing Starlet Seer because we have an okay amount of spells in the deck. Um, I did consider getting three Sisters into here just to get some extra spell triggers. They're just really hard to fit. The only thing I could really reduce would be turning Flash Freeze into three Sisters and running a thing that's more flexible, but also a Worst Flash Freeze. And for now, um, because I'm expecting to run it in Flash Freeze mode, mode most of the time with this deck, I'm just going to leave this as is. Um, I could have also put the three sisters in this one Stalking Shadow slot, but I think I'm going to value the Stalking Shadows higher for now at least. Uh, definitely saying to double back to you if I decide to try to tech in one more Frostbite card. Uh, we're running three of the Chemivorian Soldiers, most important enabler for, play for playing the Encroaching Mists and Viego, um, which is why we're running the Stalking Shadows, is we want a little bit more draw, and this gives us extra copies of some of our more key um, threats such as the soldier or hitting an extra omen hawk early in the game can actually be really strong. Uh, like I said, it is kind of the, fr the, the fringe pick, flex pick type thing I can change. I could hypothetically cut like one avalanche as well. Uh, three ashes, three avalanches. I really just trying to be prepared for the aggro matchup because I think this game, this deck's going to do fairly well in a game against uh, control and mid-range decks. Uh, we're running a three of despair package. This card is relatively fair removal if you're using it normally. If you frostbite a thing, it is remove a thing and take no damage in the process. Two rhyme tough shamans, mostly because of the fact that they will synergize with despair and are in a mana investment on a different turn, but they also are constantly making the rhyme fang den mothers more of a threat and uh, constantly adding to our ash count. So I decided to make room and play a couple of them. Uh, if they don't feel good enough, it could be something we cut for more controlling spells or uh, early game type things. Of course, we're playing the Viegos, we're playing Harsh Winds to two of, really good Frostbite card. It is expensive enough that we decided to play it as two instead of three of. Uh, the three of of the Rhyme Fang Denmother. I'm expecting this to be our finisher most of the time, and then Vase, then Vase of Hydra Vine right behind it's kind of a secondary finisher. It can. Um, just be a game winning condition on its own generates a chump blocker and attacker and or attacker depending on what round you're on um every round uh which is constantly making va go bigger and if he goes in play is going to level it quite quickly so yeah that's the list we're gonna go ahead and hop into some games and see how it goes let me go ahead and update our text for our thing i can do that while i'm queuing though i suppose I think uh, it that endures is going to be a very good list for Viego, uh, and I know that this is very similar to an it who uh, who endures list, but this version of the list allows me to play uh, a lot of options that are going to. Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. I was looking at my mouse um, from the game instead of my mouse on my stream to change these boxes for you. Oh no, sorry about this. Sometimes, sometimes XSplit just has a mind in its own and decides to change layers that you're clicking for no apparent reason. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, this is probably a pretty aggressive matchup, so we definitely are happy to have the Omen Hawk. Um, I think we'll actually keep the Harsh Winds here since they are playing Lurk, and we'll keep the Glimpse because uh, we can deny that Pike with it. So anyway, sorry. Um, I think that um, it that it, it it who endures is going to be a pretty good deck for Viego, but you're going to want to commit more presence in your deck to creatures that generate creatures to die and less to things like enabling the frostbite. And this is really about me trying to uh, 
try to get a good sample of what a deck that plays the Rhyme Thing Wolf feels like. And I couldn't get that sample reliably without... Interesting. Oh, and they missed. Nice. Uh, I couldn't get that information without just committing to playing a, a version of the deck that can't play the um, Enders. I think we're okay just playing the Soldier, actually. We're just going to swing out with um, all of our weak stuff because there's a good chance we're going to avalanche anyways and uh, there's no reason to sit on these 1-1s one when they're just going to die. It does mean that if they open attack, we're giving up chump blockers, but we have these better units to deal with those. Interesting they're giving up the fearsome, but I suppose it's because I have at least one thing that can block it. Also, they're clearly still thinking about it because they keep moving it back and forth. Okay. No problem there. Obviously, if you have enough generation of mists, then um, if the Enders can still get some really nice stacks going. So it feels pretty good to have an Omen Hot kit on this, and we already have a Mist hit on it. We could get another Mist hit on it, but there's a good chance we're going to Avalanche. Okay, yeah. We're going to Avalanche right now. Um... There's a chance that they're going to play another unit still, but this is going to make sure that they don't attack with this field, because if they don't play another unit, I'm going to regret not av avalanching now. There's also a, a chance that they were planning on putting a Rek'Sai on the bottom of their deck, or not on the bottom, on the top of their deck, in order to get a double boost and kill this, and I may have just dis disrupted their plan. Okay, um, that's actually not bad for us at all, because they had to commit two Shape Stones just to uh, keep their units alive. And I can still trade with said units. Uh, I'm going to take this four, because I want to keep this in play for Viego's leveling. They only have one Lurk Trigger right now, so I don't have to be too worried about, like, a Pike coming and killing the Viego. Okay, this actually works fine for us. We're going to go ahead and take, take the block, actually, because uh, that will generate a Mist. And, um, as much as I don't want to give them damage on my Viego, I think I need to keep the pressure going, and right now this is actually a okay attack for us. It does mean that, um, he's possibly in range for killing, but since I have two glimpses as well, I think I just need to chance it. Man, I think I'm just punished, right? Because that's exactly what they needed to kill it. Yeah, I risked, I literally risked just like, okay, like, they need Pike exactly right now, and if they don't have Pike exactly, then I have time to respond, and they got Pike exactly, so, is what it is. Um, that was a calculated risk that I took the wrong gamble on. We're gonna go ahead and throw this down f first, as much as I would like to get a rhyme, t uh, a rhyme tusk in play. I think it's more important to... Um, make sure we have our blockers, and we can deny this pike damage with our glimpse. Okay. We'll probably just throw the Omen Hawk now, because we want to hit the buffs as fast as possible. Uh, I almost just passed immediately, but I hit a Viego. So, we're going to throw that down. I was going to pass initially and just kind of sit on spell mana, and then if they spent too much mana, I was going to play the, the Shaman. But I think we're pretty happy with this, because uh, this Vigo should be out of range of just dying. 
We'll just save the mana here, though. Knowing that we have the Harsh Winds lets us play around quite a bit of things. Okay, that's fine with us. We're in a pretty good situation here, actually, because they have to commit pretty heavily if they want to try to kill this, and the fact we have Frostbite is not good for them. Well, we're going to take our only option we have. That's actually a pretty good hit. And we need to save these resources for our Frostbite. Interesting decision to pull with that. There's no reason to throw this out here except to have a death occur. So we're going to just... We're going to take a little bit more damage than I would care to, but hopefully uh, this pike is gone and... Uh, Diego won't take any damage beyond the, the love tap, hopefully. Great. I want to get a Hydra Vine out, but I'm heavily considering the Rhyme Tusk and then top decking the Despair Lockdown. Lockdown doing the Rhyme Tusk. Because I... I'm going to have issues with that Overwhelm at this point, because my health is so low. Okay, this actually is fine for us. We'll block here so we actually get the trade. And that's going to generate a Mist. There is a consideration to be made for um, for despairing the misfortune. The thing about doing that, though, is I would be giving up. Um, I'd be giving up three health while I'm at six, and that's probably a little bit too risky. Because make it ring could just kill me if they have barrels or anything. And considering this isn't the traditional list for the deck, considering they have a Misfortune, I just have to anticipate them playing other tech cards and not just the Misfortune. Okay. Four, six, eight, nine, ten. I don't even know why I started counting. Okay, so we can deny the damage, but the Frostbite will be gone, and that's going to be really problematic for us. We're hoping to hit something that will let us frostbite again, because if not, there's there's a lot at stake, at stake here. I have a game to lose, and uh, the only thing with enough help to really make it through here. Okay. Good news is they're out of cards. Bad news is, is um, really all they need to do to not lose this game is open attack and pull my Diego away from their overwhelm unit. If I don't top deck something to frostbite right now, I just lose. Okay, I'm still alive. I'm actually still alive. They uh they played that strange. They only need they only need 2 points of damage, but they played that very strange and that matters. <laughs> Um, what really matters here, actually, is probably getting Frostbite stuff out so that I can remove this Misfortune. Because if they get the leveled attack, I just die. But Pike is the first remove, which is part of the problem here. Okay, 
so what I'm going to do is attack immediately. They have to block at least one of my cre uh, at least one of my units because of this. I can't risk them on um, playing a fish and leveling the misfortune because I'll die to her leveled effect. I do not have an answer to that. Okay, and we got there. Woo! At least in that matchup, uh, the vine didn't feel very good. But kind of the reason we're playing that card is if we go up, a, go up against a control deck, we need something that can make pers uh, threats consistently, and that card does that. Uh, and we have enough units they want to play removal on that it may be awkward for them to try to remove it by the time we get one down. And that's really why it's in the deck. It's not for the aggro matchups. It's a card that you just want to toss away when you're playing against an aggressive deck. But if control ends up being a thing, it's going to be really strong. And I think the, I think kind of the way I'm going to build the deck in general is kind of assess what the metagame feels like. And... Um, if it doesn't seem like there's a lot of aggro, then it'll stay. And if it seems like there's a ton of aggro and not very much control, it'll probably go for more um, early pressure and con and removal. It's just going to depend on um, what I'm seeing a lot of in queue. For now, though, I, I like the kind of well-rounded builder. I have an answer to everything. These uh, Rhyme Test Shamans really like to uh, get help hit by Omen Hawks. I think we're just gonna. I think it's okay to waste a little mana here, but also we have an Ash, so I'm not positive I want to do this. Let's just pass for now and see if they do anything. Because if they end round here, I can live with that. Okay. Um. I don't want that to get out of hand. I think that's worth just despairing and taking two. That's a perfect example of a good unit to play Despair on, because um, you actually gain value <laughs> playing that against it. It's not just like, oh, I really wish I didn't take damage for doing this. It's, you know it's going to get bigger. Ballistic Bot is another great example. You play against a Ballistic Bot, especially if you hit it like round one of it coming down. Okay, that's annoying. TF uh, game plank has been pretty popular. It's probably because a lot of YouTubers have been playing um, have been playing Nab decks lately, and a lot of people like to duplicate what they see. Um, I don't have anything in my deck that pings for one, right? But I guess they don't know that. I can make them do some weird player rounds. And three damage is a large enough number that I should be concerned. I'm gonna pass first and see what they do. Um, cause if they float the mana here, I think my board state's okay. Yeah. Throw this down first. Knowing that I hit this, uh, this dead mother, I kind of just want to develop my board as much as possible right now. They hypothetically won't have a lot of answers. The The strongest answer they have is if they pull something from my deck, I think. Okay. Then that's going to get Frostbitten. in. Um, I'll pull... Th I'll pull it. it it'll, if nothing else, it'll, it'll make them uh, use it or lose it. Cool. That's fine. Okay, that's a little annoying, but it's fine. I'm considering playing the Viego next. The really awkward thing about it is, like, I would prefer to save this trade for after Viego, but I also don't want to take the extra damage.
they're playing passively enough. I'm just going to start slamming threat after threat and force them to be more proactive. I think they're probably depending on my deck to give them solutions, though. And if that's the case, their best solutions are going to be things like that, where now they're frostbiting me with my own card, or, you know, my AoEs, and a lot of that I'm okay with getting hit by. Let's do this, and then we're going to make them unable to block with their monkey as well. That way it's just one damage at the end of the round. They won't be able to get a plunder off from blocking. And now, in order to block damage, they're going to have to actually commit units they care about. Okay. My health is low enough, I do still need to be a little bit worried they can do something big and explosive. Uh, that's not awful for me, actually. Does that level Viego? Uh, not quite, but... That is worse for me. But Viego's gonna be bigger just from starting the round. Frostbite the game plank. Yeah, I think we're okay. And we're gonna get another mist. Yeah, because we're gonna get another mist right here too. And if they don't just attack, we do have the crystal arrow. Yeah. Okay, that is three damage to all of our stuff, which is annoying. Uh, da -da. We're going to do it like this so that if they play something else the explosion doesn't actually kill my stuff. The are just the beginning. So the funny thing here is if I don't kill Game Plank, I steal Game Plank. Um... I think this effect will go off before the Rhyme Toss, but I'm not positive. I'm missing a pass because right now they need to do more to not lose. Okay, I don't feel like dealing with two Powder Kegs at the start of the round, so let's just kill this now so I steal something else. Okay, that's super annoying for us, but I'm pretty glad I played around that. Also, so they hit at least two of my AoEs. Like I said, their best answers are my answers, and they hit them. So talk about um, the high roll on the on the plunder end of things. <laughs> Um, sure, this is annoying enough, I'm just going to do it. If nothing else, it's going to make them trade unfavorably with me now. They shouldn't have enough spell mana to do a ton about this.
Yeah, I thought it still resolved. Cool. Mm-hmm. And then you're gonna... This also might just be... Yeah, there we go. They're conceding. <laughs> okay, we got there. And we got there with them getting all the removal that our deck could play against us, basically. <laughs> Because all of their really good AoE turns where they really hurt my board was my cards. Jeez. I don't think Plunder will be too popular, but it's actually possible that Plunder's popular enough that I have to play less removal that affects me. <sighs> We're going to finish our five set on this and then we'll end the stream since it is later than our stream time. And we've already made up the time we were late by, but I'd like to finish the five set at least. Okay, they're probably playing for the late game, so I could probably actually hold the Hydrovine. I'm going to toss the Shaman, though. Um, and I'll toss one Seer, because I would like to actually hit spells for the other Seer, and if I just hold the whole hand of them... Okay, cool. No spells anyway. Uh, but if I just hold the whole hand of them, then I feel like the odds of that are going to be far too low. This is probably a if that endures deck if I had to make an educated guess like an if that endures ramp deck. So we do need to be conscientious of uh, of AOE. Mm -hmm. I'll just deny this doing anything this turn. It isn't even necessarily the strictly best thing to do, but. Play that. If they play AoE, that's fine. I don't mind. And this is threatening enough that they might AoE about it. Okay. That's fine. We'll do this. My guess is that's in a block here. This is a block here. Or they'll take the one. That's also possible. Actually, if they have an AoE, they're definitely not going to block the one. That makes sense. Okay, they have a Vile Feast, so that also makes sense. So far, my theory about them being late game has paid off. Only one frostbite at the time. Mm -hmm. and that's fine. There's a good chance they're gonna play an AOE to follow it up, but I'm fine with an avalanche coming down right now. It's gonna generate more stats for my Viego if it does. Um, huh. This is an interesting turn for us. I think what we actually do is... We'll play a Seer, because if they have an Avalanche, the Seer survives. And I'll probably sit on the Despair Freeze combo. And or use said combo. Um, I want a better target though. I'm pretty sure at this point that they're at that endures deck, and um, being able to stop its damage and then remove it is going to be pretty important for us. Uh, we'll attack with just this. And the only reason I'm making that trade is I'm 99% sure they have removal anyways, and this at least is giving me a little bit more um, stats against that. Okay, this is probably a good enough target to just kill.
And we're getting two buffs off of the Starlet Seer. So like, even right now, the Rhyme Frame Dumb Mother only makes a 3-3, but that's 8-8 eight, eight in stats for 6 mana. The only reason I'm not doing it is because I'm playing more reactively against their deck instead of proactively. Because I could have dropped that and had a reasonable unit out. And it works well with Viego as well. Okay, we have our own Avalanche now. Okay, I'm definitely gonna drop the Hydra Vine here. It puts them in a really awkward situation, actually. Because unless they have just straight field wipe, this is a board that's really dangerous, but they uh, can't remove it with Avalanche. Okay, we got a Vengeance out of them. I'll take it. Because uh, the thing about Hydra Vine is, is it's a bigger threat than Viego is on a turn for turn average. And that's so important. <laughs> Um, I don't want to commit the next Hydra Vine in case they're playing, like, actual AoE in their deck. So we'll just do this, because this should incentivize them enough that my field's really dangerous, that if they have it, they'll use it. And then we'll have a follow-up Hydra Vine for next round. Okay, that's fine with us. There's a high likelihood they just don't have... An AoE, because honestly at this point, the fact they haven't played the AoE, they're either playing really, really, really well, or they just don't have it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. So you have the Avalanche then, you're going to Avalanche next round, after I generate another unit. Because I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they're telegraphing Avalanche, so I'm going to wait on this here. Okay, we're gonna play the Viego first. Uh, once again, if they have if they have the 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 field wipe, they have they just have to play it now. They don't even have a choice. This Viego is too big of a threat. Okay, I thought they were telegraphing two damage, and sure enough, there it is. Okay, so another vengeance. I'll take it though. Like if you if they're giving me their vengeances right now, that's so good for us. And we so much survived that, too. we'll do here is we're gonna go ahead and just anything that can't kill trundle will fight a wall i probably should have swapped those because uh the number might matter a little bit more on these walls That's all three vengeances. Jesus Christ. I honestly didn't expect three vengeances, and even if they were playing three, I didn't expect to see three this early in the game. Like, they're only a third of the way through their deck, and they hit all three vengeances? All right. <laughs> okay, this is, is actually a pretty good round for us. Um, I think we're going to Frostbite for sure, because I don't want to lose this unit. I need to play the Avalanche now. Because I can't risk them passing turn and letting the Trundle live. Okay, it's at least buying a card from them. Got it. 
I can't believe they've actually have had all three vengeances. I wonder if they're even playing actual field wipes or if they're just playing hard removal. We're, we're to the point where Ash will level herself, which is nice. Oh, and we hit Ash, which is even nicer. Okay, we'll go ahead and throw that. I think at this point we have to just try to go for game here. The deck's been super annoying. It's tricky though, because uh, if I go for game, I, I could just be punished for this, but I need to make sure that the fact they can't block with zeros is a factor. The worst case scenario is they can buff both units and then they'll take nine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to eat this wall so that I don't have to deal with the vulnerable. Because I can't kill them this round anyways now. And that is at least forcing them into another answer for Ash. Okay. I don't think my uh, my guess on what they're playing was wrong though. Definitely feels like that's what they're playing. The nice thing though is if uh, they play a they they who endures now, I can frostbite it and. Mhm. Mm you got the vulnerable. It's gonna be an even trade though if you don't have a buff. Trade it is. I'll just sell in the crystal hour for now. There's no reason to waste it. Drawing a card isn't worth it, and being able to survive a turn of them trying to go for lethal is pretty worth it. Okay. They either have... I wonder if they actually have an AoE or something in, um, to follow that up with, because interesting. Okay, there's another AoE. Okay, at least they're starting to run out of gas pretty badly. We're just gonna go for five and... Jesus. They pit all of their answers though, that's for sure. This is one of those matchups where having the third vine would feel really good. Because right now not having the third vine hurts. But we know that we have Ash times like a million in our deck and that's pretty relevant. And now we have like all of our frostbite cards. There's our despair. It may be hard for them to actually win with their game plan now though, which is pretty nice for us. Okay, we're gonna say contest the board here. Nothing crazy, just Okay. So they're playing Howling Abyss. That doesn't actually change what my theory is. They could still be playing, um, they could still be playing they, uh, they Who Endure, but the chances are they're an ARAM deck and they've just been playing this controlling, super slow methodical list this entire time. Still might have removal for this, but I gotta force it. We're having that super annoying Battle of Attrition game. Also, if I hit another unit right now and they can't get rid of the Ash, it's potentially game winning, so. Okay, that's another unit. It does actually allow me to threaten lethal. I have lost my threat of lethal. I think it's probably worth playing this now. Uh, I'll just attack. Um, Azir is one of the things that can actually get big enough to be a problem, just by them zerging me, or value attacking, so I just need to get rid of it while I can. Okay. 
Okay, this is a really, really big wolf. That matters quite a bit, I think. The nice thing here, too, is I can actually afford a flash freeze again if I need to. Okay, you got it. There's a chance they have another ping going, but uh, this is another game-winning threat, and either of these hitting wins me the game. So I just need to get him down. And if they can't ping this Ash before my turn, then... Um, they're at least allowing me to frostbite again, even if they can ping her after she attacks. I'm not even going to risk passing priority to them. I'm just attacking again. I just need to hope that they run out of answers long enough to take a hit. They've, had, they've played a ridiculous amount of them, and at this point it's almost definitely just... Oh, cool, they lose. Jesus. It was almost... It was almost positive at that point they were just an ARAM deck because they were basically ARAM with just pure removal plus trundle. And seems like that's what they were, unless they just didn't hit their other stuff. It's not a bad deck, but man, it's an annoying deck to play against because it's just like... Do you still have stuff? Okay, cool. Your turn. Do you still have stuff? Okay, cool. Your turn. Do you still have stuff? Okay, cool. Your turn. That was the entire match. It was just me passing turn every time they had an answer and then eventually them running out of gas but geez i'm pretty happy that i had I had the tech cards for for control now right so that's one of the things i was talking about was um like the vengevine being better in the control matchup and a lot worse in the non-control matchup this looks like a pretty aggressive list uh, we definitely want this, the Seer. I think the Avalanche is really important, and I actually think the Despair is probably worth keeping, because uh, killing an Auction early is probably worth it. Every time I've played against it, it has successfully leveled, and that is scary. Okay. This just isn't just... This won't just die to me playing my own Avalanche, so it's worth it. Uh, they probably have a combat trick. I'm going to chance it. Because if they have a trick, yeah, I was like, if they have a trick, they probably are burning it instead of dealing with Avalanche, and I think I'm okay with that. I'm hoping they play another unit here so I can Avalanche. If they swing, I think I have to block and force the trick, because it feels like the way to play against this deck is to just make them burn all of their tricks. Okay. If they have a trick that can save Akshan, they may play it, but perfect. But it, it gives me it gives me information, so still pretty valuable. They can have that. We definitely value our um, our Starlet Seer higher than that. I think since we have the Wolf in hand, we're just gonna get Ash and play as fast as possible. Um, yeah, it's a little annoying, but they either can put damage... I guess they can actually kill Ash. Did I get the misplay? Because they can block Ash, throw an axe down, and then kill her. Which is annoying, but it's something that I just need a force to have happen, I think. Oh, they didn't play the axe. Cool. <laughs> yeah, they might build a pinger or something, but... I guess they could have just not had something that they were willing to discard, too. Okay, um, it gets through the spell shield, so I think that was more important this time around. We'll, we'll worry about, uh, killing the Draven next turn when we can actually despair it.
hitting a lot of wolves while we're actually stacking frostbites is going to be pretty good for us too. I think I might play the soldier before I commit to the despair, if the, especially if they just pass back at me. Okay, they got a blocker, not a big deal. super worried about that actually let's go ahead and remove what we are planning on removing i think because we have the wolves we're gonna keep pressure up with ash even though she's gonna die because of it And we'll save that to block since it doesn't have a good trade anyway. Cool. Like, no surprise they're playing this, but pretty big surprise they're playing the Retired Reckoner. Like, sure, they're playing Riven and Draven for targeting purposes, but mm, it's just, I don't think it's good enough. Maybe you really go ham with axes on it. I think it's more meme than good, though. I think I'm going to do the Hydra Vine first because it's going to give me a blocker. And yes, this also gives me a blocker, but um, I don't think they have enough to just beat me this turn, even with these all having the Overwhelm. Okay, that one having quick attack just makes it not worth even interacting with. I can at least force a trick out of that one, though. You want to pass turn back to me? I'll take that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Gotcha. Grappling hook is freaking disgusting, like I expected it to be. Also, man, those rune runners are BM. Scared of a fair fight. You're the one that just smacked my thing and didn't let it hit you back. You're scared of a, free, of a fair fight, rune runner. You are. <laughs> I mean, if this eats a combat trick, okay, eats a combat trick, and I might as well throw this here because it's gonna die at the end of the round anyways. So I can soak two points of damage with it. Oh, okay, so we're still in. We're not dead yet. That's annoying, but it's fine. We'll get the arrow off of this at least. Okay. Good enough for me, I suppose. They have to play a trick if they want to kill Ash, so. <laughs> and having the arrow and a harsh winter fall up is going to be pretty good for us. Since this is going to block the initial freeze. Twelve mana next turn, so I could even, like, Rhyme Fang Den Mothers and, and Harsh Winds, potentially. Interesting that they just gave me the kill? 
I guess if they really were valuing it for the horde and not much else, it's fine, but interesting decision. Uh, a little annoying for us, but if they are even able to reforge, they'll have the pass priority to do it. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. I always forget what the first half of this says. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. I mean, that's, that's scary, that's for sure. They're threatening a lot of damage right now. Okay. I mean, you put me in a situation here where there's no reason to try to frostbite this. I just either die to it or I don't. So right now I'm, I would have one life left. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this. Gives me a little bit room just for margin of error. They are innoxious, so I could just still be dead, but I think they don't have a hand except for the card that just flew up that way. I'm not positive because it kind of disappeared on us. <laughs> Okay, so they get to fight a thing. Oh, and that means I die, right? Yeah, because this is gonna overwhelm because it's actually gonna attack. Okay. So we are three and one right now. We're gonna go ahead and get our last game in and then that'll be stream. Yeah, the free attacks of that is freaking disgusting like I thought they'd be cool I got an auction just for taking my time here ironically I'll probably be playing a bunch more when I go inside too but gotta hang with the fiance and stuff can't just stream all night I lost my train of thought and what the deck I was playing was so I couldn't remember its name for a second it's frozen something or other though so it's yeah blah, blah, blah. there we go so far the deck's been performing fine but it's definitely a grindy get deck like I do not win quickly <laughs> Okay, what are we up against? Sure, Frostbites are probably pretty good, but I think I only want one since I get Sipher, I'm gonna have to pop her spell shield to do anything. This might be a harder matchup for us, honestly. Um, we can handle the Zed, but the Sipher is gonna give us problems. Um, I'll take the trade. Specifically because like, oh, okay, they are actually doing it. Oh, okay. I, I was more attacking because I don't think that they would take the block um, more than anything because that basically telegraphs I have answers for the next turn if you, you know, play your 5-2. I didn't, though, so that's where it was like, great, please, uh, please don't actually block this. I, I was bluffing you. Okay. Uh, I'll attack with this. One mana trick for Zed to not die to that, I don't think is a thing. Honestly, that was an amazing top deck for us. Oh no, this is vulnerable? Okay. Sure hope you don't trade threes, uh, three attack minions with me. <laughs> oh! We didn't even give the right thing. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. I thought this was going to be the thing that got vulnerable. Uh, just because this is a little bit harder to like ping down or anything, I'll, I'll block with this version. OK, 
Okay, we actually end up kind of getting the nuts on this hand. Uh, they might have some form of removal to like a small degree, but I think this is probably a pretty safe play. Sure, that's nice and annoying. Uh, I'll attack with this because at least I can pick my trades a little bit more that the 2 1 can't go into it. And then that'll get me my, uh, my Wraith. Cool. Okay, so Sivir being able to make this vulnerable is pretty annoying. Or not make this vulnerable, but take advantage of the fact that this vulnerable is pretty annoying. Oh, we're just going to pass here. Okay, that's fine. And then we deny your damage. Neat. Uh, we're going to click pass for now. I want to make sure I save mana in case they have something to follow this up with. And I'm only losing a mana if I float it. Okay. I don't think there's anything I need to worry about at three. Let's get the ash in play. Like these two synergize together so well because uh, the ash is going to deny their one five from blocking. The run two from blocking this, not one five. Blah. Okay, yeah, you get it. Good for you. I'll avalanche here, which will pop the spell shield and kill your other units. And we still have uh, flash freeze mana. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. That's really annoying, but I can flash freeze and harsh winds back to back, so I think we're fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Either's fine. Hmm. They might have enough tricks to get through this, but I don't think they will. Because a lot of their tricks don't add a lot of attack. Like, they're, they're better off trying to kill the Ash than trying to kill a Viego, but at this point, if Ash dies, then Viego levels. And then I steal your Sivir and, like, win. Or kill your Sivir, or whichever. No, you, you, I say steal this, because your Sivir's already dead. Yeah, okay, I think we're good. I think we get there. Because all we have to do is open attack right now and we'll win. Cool. <laughs> That's a cool way to finish it off too. Actually got the level up, yeah.